Good afternoon, one and all. I, Ms. Priyanka Bhanti Vedekar, welcome our delegates and participants in this second half session of e-conference entitled Global Pharmaceutical Challenges in Drug Development for the Treatment of Cancer and Their Impact in Regulatory Management. As we know, learning is the only thing the mind never exhausts, never fear, and never regret. So with this lovely message, we will start our session with the full of energy. It's my honor to introduce our next speaker, who has charming personality, Dr. Vaishali Jadav. Dr. Vaishali Jadav, currently associated with Kokan Yankit Rahudharka College of Pharmacy and Research Institute. As Assistant Professor for B Pharmacy and HOD for Diploma Pharmacy, she has 10 years of academic and industrial experience. To mention her academic background, Dr. Vaishali completed B Pharm at NDMPPS Samaj College of Pharmacy Nashik, M Pharm and PhD at Siusha College of Pharmacy, Ascendity Women's University. Her area of specialization is pharmaceutics. She is a recipient of Rajiv Gandhi PhD Junior and Senior Research National Fellowship in the year 2010 by University Grant Commission and many awards like first prize in poster presentation in South Asian Chapter of American College of Clinical Pharmacology, Fourth International Conference on Innovations in Translating Technologies through Clinical Pharmacology in the year 2010, second prize in oral presentation in Avishka in the year 2012, Seventh Maharashtra State Inter-University Research Convention held at Ratnagiri. Dr. Vaishali has various publications in national and international journals. She has received research grant with a total amount of more than 16 lakh sponsored by UGC and AICT. Madam is a member of various professional sciences like IPA, APGI, etc. With this short, short introduction, I request Dr. Vaishali Madam to enlighten us with her knowledge. Please, ma'am. Thank Hello, you, Madam. Madam, for such a yes, great introduction. Thank you so much. So I was I would request Karchi sir to please start with the slide. Yeah, so a very good afternoon to one and all. Uh, my today's topic is cervical cancer. Next. So let us see first of all, what do you mean by cervical cancer? Uh, it is a type of malignant carcinoma, which originate in the cervix region. And uh, most of these cancers, you will find that they are uh, related or they grow in the squamous cell carcinoma, which line the cervix. The cervical cancer, if you will compare among all the different types of cancers globally, it is on uh, means four percent of the global population. You will find uh, is affected with the cervical cancer. That's why you will see that it is the second most common malignancy which affects the woman worldwide. Next. Looking at the incidence of the cervical cancer. Globally, approximately 5 lakhs of new cases of cervical cancers are diagnosed each year and uh, about 2 lakhs 80 thousands of deaths are observed in the world. As well as, uh, as I said, that 4% of the cases of cancers are diagnosed in the world. Now, coming quickly to the treatment of the cervical cancers, my more emphasis would be on the nanocarriers. The other treatment which is available for cervical cancer right now is surgical procedure, radiotherapy, and chemotherapy. Next. Now, let us have a look at the approved drugs, uh, which are present in the market since 1995 till 2012. They, here I have chalked out some examples of the drugs like doxorubicin, downorubicin, amphotericin B, cytarabine, paclitaxel, and vincristin. vincristin. So all these are the anti-cancer drugs and mostly they are available in form of liposomes. Uh, paclitaxel, it is albumin conjugated 
uh, albumin is nothing but the polymer so here you can see that they are they are available in the market with various brand names like doxil downozone and bizone and etc as you can see in the table so further we will go next uh, now let us see how this cervical cancer is caused what are the reasons for uh, causing of this can type of cancer so it is associated with high risk human papilloma virus which is mentioned as hpv and it is responsible for causing benign lesions or malignant lesions in the body uh, so it is associated with more than 90% of cervical and 70% uh, of vaginal and vulvar cancers so this all will come under the uterine types of cancers okay so there are about and uh, in this human papilloma virus not all type of viruses are responsible for causing the cervical cancers but 30 types of hpv it hpv that is human papilloma virus so out of them they are differentiated into low risk and high risk and some of them few of them are responsible for causing this type of cancer as well as the other factors which cause or which act as a triggering uh, triggering for this causing the cervical cancer are malignant and invasive phenotypic factors like smoking then carcinogenic smoke next now let us come as i said that today i'm going to speak on the nano carriers on the nano technology which is which is used for the cervical cancer so before that Uh, you should be aware of or all would be aware of that why we go for the nanotechnology because of the some drawbacks disadvantages of our conventional system where high dose is required uh, because the drug is not exactly targeted to the site of action that is one reason so targeted drug delivery is required as well as it is found that um, the drugs are not stable then uh, uh, even uh, stability issues so even toxicity issues there so in order to avoid this and very important is the solubility and viability so in order to uh, overcome all these drawbacks we prefer for the nano carrier systems and uh, the through this nano carrier system through this nano technology system drugs that is i am saying anti cancer drugs vaccines genes proteins all this can be given in the form of nano carriers now looking at the advantages of the um, nano technology is pharmacological activity is enhanced it reduces the toxicity greater retention of drug and targeted action also it improves the solubility and stability of the drugs okay and even you'll find that the biomedical application of this nano therapeutics are there like drug delivery targeted therapy gene delivery even it is given as in form of different biomarkers even uh, most of the di uh, diagnostic as and diagnostic also you can given in give in form of the nano carrier systems so these are uh, all the advantages of the nano technology next now coming to one by one we will see all different nano carriers which are used for the cervical cancer the very first that is solid lipid nanoparticles now solid lipid nanoparticles uh, they were invented in the early 90s that is in 1990 uh, you can see this there was a first generation of solid lipid matrix uh, and uh, as it is nanoparticles their particle size is in uh, nano scale and uh, they are the aqueous colloidal dispersions whose matrix form the physiological and solid biodegradable lipids now in solid lipid nanoparticles what is done is the drug it is encapsulated in the layer of a lipid layer okay and the lipids which are used for uh, formulating the solid lipid nanoparticles are the examples are like carnobavax then saturated glycerol esters palmitic uh palmitic palmitate then as well as myristic uh myristates even uh, beeswax pg cetyl palmitate okay so all this uh, different types of lipids are there like uh, one more is there glycerin 
behind it so this lipids are used in order to encapsulate the drug in that and uh, as you know the advantages of solid lipid nanoparticles are it, it increases the drug solubility also uh, the dose reduction is found then uh, enhancement in the formulation is also observed after formulating it in form of acetylene as well as there are some disadvantage of those solid lipid nanoparticles there are two major disadvantage one is that low loading capacity is there you cannot load more amount of drug in that cells uh, and the second is that there is premature expulsion of the drug during the stability of the drug okay so uh, even going further in the sln even the other modification that is surface modifications of the sln can be done by using different ligands and linkers and with the help of the surface modification the sln can be targeted at the site of action now coming to the examples of the nanotechnology of the sln here i have given uh, different examples so the other is the uh, paclitaxel and alpha tocopherol tocopherol succinate cisplatin prodrug uh, now uh, first i will tell you about the docetaxel loaded nanostructured lipid carrier now what is the difference between nlc and sln in nlc as we know that the drug is entrapped in the oil form and then in the oil and which is again coated with the lipid and then is it is dispersed in the continuous phase okay in the case of the nlc the as i as i told you the disadvantage of the sln is that you cannot load more amount of drug in there but in nlc as compared to sln as it is dispersed in oil phase you can add or you can incorporate the more amount of drug in the nlc okay and in nlc after uh, formulating it uh, the docetaxel in form of nlc you can see that the in inhibition rates uh, were higher as the amount of the drug is increased that is from 10 20 30 so even the inhibition rate is also increasing so it is showing good effect it is in inhibiting the tumor growth going further even uh, the second example that is paclitaxel you can see when it is given with the alpha tocopherol succinate cisplatin uh, pro drug even in that case also the mucosis uh, or the uh, death the cell death is more as compared to making it in the conventional form then other is hyaluronic acid with pluronic 85 and these are uh, acylins actually which are loaded with paclitaxel and they are coated with the hyaluronic acid and pluronic 85 and so this helps in the uh, targeting as well as in this it is found that the entrapment efficiency is increased as well as the uh, that is nothing but the drug loading capacity is found to be good and uh, because of that the drug release profile is prolonged five times as compared to the other formulations or conventional release we can say the next is topotecon hydrochloride even this is one of the drug which is used for the cervical cancer treatment in this you can see when it is formulated in form of acyl in the form of acylene the good uh, results were found or you can say it is an attractive formulation characteristics as compared to the other formulation now here is a diagram in which we can see the pictures of different nano carriers so here you can see liposome picture is there nano structured lipid carrier is there as i told you that in nano structured is in nlc the oil core is there and in oil core the drug is present and then it is coated with the lipid layer so that you can see here very well polymer uh, polymeric nano particles are there then uh, micro emulsions are there and acylene is there the nlc below nlc you can see the sln in which the lipid core is present and inside that the drug is present okay and in micro emulsion it is very simple form that is uh, it is same like the emulsions that is the drug uh, is suspended in your oil form and which is uh, dispersed in the water phase uh, the important thing about micro emulsion or nano emulsion is that the particle size is in microns or nano okay next now after acylene we will see the liposomes now i showed you the diagram of the liposomes so what are liposomes again here you can see a very good picture of liposomes where you can see a closed pericle vesicles are present and in this 
the central part is an aqueous solution in which your drug is dispersed okay and there are the lipid two lipid layers that is uh, the lipid membranes which are formed of the natural phospholipids natural phospholipids example like egg yolk lecithin and soybean lecithin so they can be used as an lipid membranes as an uh, to form that and this lipid membranes you can see that there are two heads of it that is hydrophobic tail and hydrophilic head both are available to it so in liposomes you will see that both types of drugs like hydrophilic and hydrophobic type of drugs both can be incorporated and the liposomes can be made for that now some examples of this liposomes are uh, liposomes and chitosan particles they are used to overcome the deficiencies like uh, they are for, means in form of nano carriers they are given and they have shown a good result means for being the advantage treatment in the cervical cancers okay so next is the new even uh, most many vaccines are given in form of the liposomes okay that is uh, they have uh, given uh, good results when they are given in form of the liposomes and they are found to eradicate the tumors through the encapsulating antigens and adjuvants in multilaminar in multilaminar liposomes so multilaminar liposomes is here you can see the two lipid membranes are there in case of multilaminar liposomes the number of layers whatever are there they would be increasing okay so now in liposomes even um, the other than the, the natural phospholipids which are used are i told you uh, soybean lecithin uh, even cholesterol is one of the uh, example that is of the semisynthetic dimeristole which is used as an lipid mem in the lipid membrane and the cholesterol it helps in penetrating the cells so that is advantage of it okay then uh, next is um, the size of the if i speak of the size of the uh, uni laminar vesicles and uh, this multi laminar vesicles the size is uh, of uni laminar is 40 to 80 nanometer whereas in large it is uh, greater than 100 nanometers and i as i told in multi laminar the number of uh, whatever lipid membranes are there they are the more so this drug as it is um, Ha, it, as it is coated with the different uh, ligands, you will find that it can deliver at the site of the action easily. Okay, next. Now there is one effect that is enhanced permeability and retention effect. Now, what is this effect? It is found that the lipid nano carriers. Uh, they have a great potential for solubilizing and encapsulating and administrating the drugs with enhanced permeability and retention effect you will find that the drug anti cancer drug when it is given in form of the um, this nano carriers their retention in the cell is more as compared to the in the cancerous cell is more as compared to the normal cells okay this is one thing and even the permeability of this cells is in the cells of your formulation is more as compared to the other cells one is also because of the particle size which is there so this enhanced permeability and retention is a concept by which nano carriers of certain size they tend to accumulate in the tumor tissue then the normal tissue what i said as well as the further enhanced by pathophysiological factors and they uh, involve it is involved in enhancement of extravasation now what happens is in the cancerous cell whatever uh, the phenol biological process of extravasation of micromolecules macromolecules in the solid tumor tissues is found that is a space is created and because of that what happens is the drug or the nano carriers get entrapped or they retain there for long time as compared to the other formulations okay next now coming to the uh, uh, next formulation that is nano emulsion nano emulsion as we are aware that emulsions they are the heterogeneous system and they consist of oil phase they consist of aqueous phase and they are stabilized by adding the surfactants or emulsifying agents in them 
the particle size is less than 200 nanometer they have a negative surface charge and because of this negative surface charge uh what happens is it avoids the coalescence of the droplets and uh have a short life half short life that is due to opsonization of mononuclear phagocytic system you know what happens is what is this opsonization of mononuclear phagocytic system that is uh your uh, immune immune system uh, it has got this mono uh, phagocytic system that is uh, they will engulf the nanocarriers okay and uh, if their particle size is less than 100 nanometer or it is greater than 100 nanometer so in that case the opsonization is uh observed but it can be avoided if you coat your nanocarriers with certain material because of which this opsonization can be inhibited now here are some examples i have given like melphalan uh, it is given in form of nano emulsion and uh, after giving it in form of nano emulsion it was found that the viability of the drug was enhanced it was increased as compared to the conventional drug and uh, the other examples uh, like cisplatin and myrisplatin uh, even they are used for the cervical cancer so what is done is this drug cisplatin and myrisplatin they are bind to the endothelial growth factor binding peptide so this is one which is used as an ligand and it is bound to the surface of your microemulsion and it helps in the targeting of the cancer cells this is one thing other is the gandolium okay so gandolium what it does is it is used in the diagnostic nano emulsions okay if you were nano emulsions you want to use it for the diagnosis purpose so for that the gandolium is used next now next coming to the polymeric nanoparticles now polymeric nanoparticles as you know the polymers are used to coat the drug that is your drug will be encapsulated in that then uh, the size range is generally uh, 1 to 100 nanometer okay and uh, advantages of this polymeric nanoparticles are protection against enzymatic degradation then it shows controlled release if you want to uh, give your drug in a controlled release form that can be given with this greater penetration capacity why greater penetration capacity because of its lower particle size then most of the genes like dna rna and several antibodies they can be given in form of the polymeric nanoparticles they can be bind to your uh, drug and thus it can help in the specific targeting of the formulation then next is uh, this pnp that is polymeric nanoparticles they can be also given as antibacterial chemotherapies then uh, they can be given for the treatment uh, in the cervical cancers one of the example is uh, silver nanoparticles then uh, which are uh, using the aqueous solution of chitosan graph polyacrylam polyacrylamide uh, so they are along with the polyethylene glycol which acts as a stabilizer so even they can be given uh, in for uh, as an polymeric nanoparticles okay so in this polymeric uh, polymeric nanoparticles there are some disadvantages also like uh, enzymatic degradation uh, is one thing which is observed then uh, other is its high cost that is uh, as compared to the other nanoparticles the so polymeric nanoparticles they are more costly even the polymeric nanoparticles there are two more types of uh, this formulations are nano capsules and nano spheres which can be given as an uh, which are the further uh, i can say the um, improvements of the polymeric nanoparticles next so now next coming to the metallic nanoparticles now the word itself tells that uh, it is a metallic nanoparticles means all metals would be there which will be used or which will be formulated as an nanocarriers and uh, coming to this metallic nanoparticles they are very versatile tools for biomedical applications okay so they including the distribution of targeted drugs many gene that is like dna rna they can be given in form of the metallic nanoparticles and this study uh, that is uh, it is of great interest to study the nanoparticles of silver 
okay so because of they are saying that uh, silver and gold nanoparticles they can also be given in form of the they are nothing but uh, in the form of the metallic nanoparticles okay then the use of biochemical uh, material in the biomedical fields such as immunoassay diagnosis delivery of drug in cancer all these are the uh examples of the metallic nanoparticles how they can be given even uh, they can uh, here one example is given of the supra molecular nano assembly of uh, gnp with doxorubicin okay so one example is given of the doxorubicin drug and when it is it was given with this metallic nanoparticle it was found that the uh, you can say the capacity of this drug was the targeting capacity was in increased as well as the uh, cell inhibition was observed higher as compared to others then there are other metals which can are given in form of nanoparticles like titanium is one example okay so now titanium we know it uh, is included in most of the cosmetic uh, formulations like uh, it is um, given in the sunscreen sun sun tan right but now here along with the nanoparticles also the titanium can be bind and it can be given and when it was given it was found to target the cancerous cells and because of this the 90% of death was observed as well as the cell survival was also decreased okay now there are other examples of the metallic nanoparticles like copper oxide is there zinc oxide is there then uh, this copper oxide and zinc oxide even they are bind with the uh, metallic nanoparticles along with the drug and uh, they are uh, found effective in different types of cancer like cervical cancer lung cancer breast cancer then epidural uh, and lung cancer okay so um, uh next example what i told you that was the zinc oxide so zinc oxide itself it has also it is also used in sunscreens and it has got the photocatalytic properties so it is also used in order to target to the cancerous cells now the zinc oxide paclitaxel uh, uh zinc oxide it is combined with the paclitaxel and cisplatin it was found that the cell death or cancerous cell it were inhibited more as compared to the standard formulation one more example of the metallic nanoparticles is barium carbonate barium carbonate it is used as a thermodynamic mineral okay and um, they are also used uh, in uh, nano material through the synthesis of the green synthesis is one method of uh, formulating the nanoparticles uh and uh, this method that is green synthesis what is said is your materials or uh, uh, whatever procedure is used whatever ingredients are used so they are less no dangerous or they are less expensive and uh, non toxic so this is one type of the ecological method by which the metallic nanoparticles can be formulated okay so now next now here are some examples in the tables you can see in this uh, different examples of liposomes are given uh, that is uh, just i will read the names that is liposomal orion then uh, protamine dna nanoparticles si rna uh, rna so here you can see is that the genes are also given in form of the liposomes okay next uh the the examples what here are given are uh, sirna of uh, human papilloma papilloma virus uh so here you can see that uh, the cationic uh, liposomes are also there then uh, biphasic vesicles are there even uh, dotab e7 complex uh, so this is a coding which is given for one of the anti cancer activity drug uh, next okay uh, so other examples uh, same here they have given the human papilloma virus gene plasmid in which you can see the oligoma oligomanos liposomes means uh, they are uh, combined together and they are given then uh, next are the liposomal transfection uh, then sirna which is complex with the pegylated uh, lipoflexes then uh, other is dopc nanoparticles 
so uh, these are some of the examples and you can see their results it was observed that their targeting was very good as well as um, many genes were given in form of uh this uh, formulations uh, even the anti tumor activity was uh, shown very good by giving the uh, formulations in the form of the liposomes next now here uh, the next are the inorganic nanoparticles now in inorganic nanoparticles you can see uh, the copper oxide nanoparticles is one of the example of this and it has got the potential in treatment of cervical cancer lung and uh, cytotoxicity against four lineages of cancer cells such as human breast cervical epithelioma lung and normal human dermal fibroblast cell lines uh, is one uh, one example other are the nanoparticles of zinc oxide are also there uh, as i told you this earlier that they have got the photolytic uh, properties and they can be given in form of the uh, nanoparticles and the other example i told you the uh, barium carbonate is also one of the important thermodynamically stable mineral which is given in form of the inorganic nanoparticles uh, even um, uh, this already i told you that uh, it is an ecological method uh, which is formulated uh, with the green synthesis uh, and um, you will find that there is no risk to the health or you can see the toxicity or uh, it is safe as compared to the other type of methods of formulations whatever are used next now coming to the dendrimers now what are dendrimers dendrimers they are the monodispersed system and they are formed by molecular weight polyons they are having a defined structure consisting of tree like arcs or branches um then uh, dendrimers they can be incorporated they can incorporate small guest molecules by electrostatic or hydrophobic interaction uh, next is uh, in some cases the surface groups are covalently modified and uh, added sugar and drugs for this reason so the dendrimers uh, they are used in medical and biotechnological applications due to their biocompatibility okay this is one thing now in dendrimers as i told you that they are the monodispersed systems and uh, they are formed with the help of the molecular weight polyons uh, uh, and they have like uh, tree like arms or branches and uh, your drug whatever is there it is encapsulated in the dendrimers then they are binded on the surface of the dendrimers okay with the help of the groups like amine and carboxyl group Uh, which are binded or uh, with the help of this group the surface are covalently modified and uh, the sugars and even other factors are added so that in order to target the drug to the site of action okay then uh, next is that uh, in this uh, dendrimers you will find that the biocompatibility is enhanced and uh, the sirna or uh, the genes whatever dna are given they can be also given in form of the dendrimers such as uterine cervix cancer then uh, high risk hpv e6 and e7 oncogenes are the primary cause of the disease okay so these are the examples of the dendrimers now next slide me abhyas karo next please next slide please okay now next coming to the uh, micelles uh, the micelles they are the nano carriers uh, with size uh, around or less than 100 nanometer uh, now in micelles you can uh, see that the great depth of tissue penetration for targeted drug delivery and they usually disintegrate rapidly in the body okay uh, now uh, coming to the micelles uh, oh, it is formed that the micelles uh, they are formed by any amphiphilic molecule as surfactants in aqueous media however the conventional surfactants have a very high critical micelle concentration so in order to uh, and this uh, whatever micelles are formed with the very high critical micelle concentration you will find that uh, what will happen is that they will dissolve or they will get um, 
are dissociated in the bloodstream. So this is the uh, limitation we can see of this type of muscle. So in order to avoid this limitation, the alternative is that the amphiphilic materials, they are uh, used, uh, the amphiphilic materials, they are included with the amphiphilic copolymers. Co and because of this inclusion, what happens is that whatever micelles are formed, they will be strong and they will not dissociate uh, in the bloodstream or in biological fluids. Okay, uh, so this is one thing, even uh, the micelles can be given in uh, form of, uh, or they can be used for the dermal formulations also. The one thing is that the viscosity has to be arranged, uh, adjusted. For this uh, transdermal formulations, one requirement is this. And the uh, dermal formulations, whatever are made, mostly the vaginal creams, you will find that. They can be given in form of the micelles. So the polymers, can be added uh, in the micelles and the examples um, of this is the bioadhesive. One of the example is bioadhesive thermoresponsive system, okay, uh, which is given for an vaginal system. Now, uh, in this, there is uh, one more uh, type that is environmental sensitive formulations. Now, what is this environmental uh, sensitive formulation? In this uh, formulations, they will release the drug only upon the external stimulus. That is, if there is change in pH or if there is pH change in temperature. So at that time only the drug will be released. And uh, so uh, they can alter their physical characteristics. So as I said that, depending upon the physical environment, depending upon the environment in which this uh, micelles are there, the release would be there. And uh, mostly they are many, uh, they are given for the vaginal formulations. Okay. Uh, many poly, uh, examples of this micelles are polymeric micelles and the other is the gene delivery. Okay. So many genes also, they can be given in form of the micelles. And then the polymeric micelles, they were tar targeted with uh, one of the example now they have given that is they are, tar they can be also targeted further by attaching the ligands to them like folic acid so with which the targeting uh, to the specific area can be achieved uh, so this is one of the example of micelles that is folic acid conjugated polymeric micelles and even uh, further people have also attached the curcumin to it okay so with which the cancer uh, that is death of the cancerous cells was enhanced as compared to the earlier one or the other one. Okay, next. Next. Okay, so one more is there, vaccines. Okay, so now, as I, now here we have seen uh, all the different types of nanocarriers. So even vaccines are there, which can be given in form of the nanocarriers. Okay, and uh, as you know, this in vaccines in form of nanoparticles, first of all, they will solve the safety problem or uh, the immunogenicity, whatever is there, it will be enhanced, it will give a long immunogenicity. Then the nanoparticle based vaccines, they have the ability to generate the safe vaccines with excellent immunological profile. Uh, because in case of vaccines, this is uh, very important that whatever effect of vaccine is there, it should stay for a long time. No booster dose should be given again and again. Okay. So with the help of nanoparticles, that effect can be extended. Then next is the uh, it plat uh, platform assembles a ralapeptide and a polymeric uh, PVP micro needle. So these are the examples of the vaccines which are given in this form. Even the nanoparticles in vaccines, they include the virus-like particles. And uh, these nanoparticles, they are used to transport the vaccines. And they include the liposomes, lipid nanoparticles and cationic polymers. Uh, so for their simplicity of production, uh, of immunogenicity, uh, they are given is they are saying that it is a due in part to the repeatability and polyvalency of the substances. Okay, so um, after vaccines, that is which are very important for uh, generating the or for long term immunogenicity in a human being. Next, I will come to the conclusion. 
of all these nanocarriers. Now, coming to the conclusion of uh, today's talk is that uh, we, as we know that uh, drug, when it is given in form of the nanocarriers, there are many advantages over the conventional release. Okay. And uh, there is great need to find new treatment alternatives for cervical cancer. As you know that in case of uh, cervical cancer or uh, HPV, which is the human papilloma, papilloma virus, which is a triggering factor responsible for the cervical cancer. Uh, so um, the major responsible for these cases means uh, the it reduces the side effects as we saw that you know, then uh, conventional ineffect the conventional drug delivery they are uh, ineffective as compared to the other uh, nano carriers uh, and uh, this nlc or the SLNs, they can be divided into or they can be given in the form of different uh, nano carriers like metal particles in organic <laughs> SLNs, then uh, polymeric nanoparticle, liposomes, nano dendrimers. Okay, so in different formulations, they can be given. This is one protein, and uh, because of which uh, we, we achieve the several advantages like drug solubility is enhanced. Uh, dose is reduced, then the stability is enhanced. Next. Next. Okay. So, these are some of the advantages by giving them in the different uh, form. Then the drug, uh, your nanoparticles, they have the ability to protect the drug chemically as well as uh, it in enhances its stability. Then, uh, it retains in the cell for a long time. That is, it has the ability to internalize in the tumor cells. So increasing its residence time in the cell and thereby increasing its efficacy and eff effectiveness. So uh, the volume surface ratio, this is also, uh, it becomes susceptible to enzymatic degradation in GID. So now this is the nothing but they have given the disadvantage of the nanocarriers that is uh, in case of nanocarriers you'll see that the particle size is very less so because of that what happens is they are susceptible to the enzymatic degradation in the GIT uh, then next is the systems are already mentioned about the ability to carry vaccines so different genes vaccines can be given in form of the nanoparticles then uh, some precautions must be taken in the production of the study. Okay, like uh, the uh, I told you about the green synthesis of the polymeric nanoparticle. This is also one area which is going up on large scale in uh, nanobiotechnology with a with a very fast growth, and uh, they are useful for giving the different drugs, agents, phytochemicals, fungi, bio polymers, and uh, thus I would say that nanoparticles, nanocarriers, they offer a great attractive solution for the safe and effective delivery of the pharmaceuticals. However, many more research is still required to ensure the safe cervical cancer because the nanocarriers also they have some few limitations although they have, but further research needs to be done in the cervical cancer to improve the drug on and on. Okay, so Next, so thank you so much. Uh, this is this was my last slide, and I have concluded my today's talk. And uh, very important is I would really thank Sir and uh, management for their great support. And uh, main uh, thank you to Sir Ali Sir for giving me the opportunity to speak on this platform. Okay, the first question is. Sorry, I did not read it. Uh, Mom, I think there is a question that is a feedback of our uh, audience, uh, okay. which is given by Maya Desil. It is a nice coverage of collateral drug carrier okay. in a cervical cancer treatment. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, so any other question? Uh, okay. No, no question, ma'am. No question from audience. Okay. Okay. So thank you yeah. so much. Thank you, Priyanka, Madam. Thank you, Purchaser. Thank you, Kali, sir, everyone, for giving me the opportunity to speak today. Thank you. Yeah.
thank you madam for this uh, fabulous session on cervical cancer treatment with nano nano carriers on focusing on nano carriers vaishali madam explained its advantage disadvantage with examples and types of nano particles she will explain about docetaxel paclitaxel alpha tocopherol succinate cisplatin prodrug liposomes epr effect of nano carriers and sing cell engulf mechanism with the help of some examples and i'm also explain in deep about poly nanoparticles metallic nanoparticles some targeted liposomes in organic nanoparticles like copper oxide zinc oxide barium carbonate etc in her talk coming to dendrimers she explain about its used in medical and biological application on micelle madam express in detail about its target and drug profile with the cancer cell death so concluding with this i again say thank you madam for this delightful session thank you yeah now moving towards next session it will be privilege to me to introduce our next speaker having articulate personality dr bharat tekade dr bharat tekade currently working as a professor and hod in pharmaceutics at kokan hanpit rahul thakur college of pharmacy and research institute karza he was a coordinator for nac accreditation and currently serving as a coordinator for iqsc dr bharat has pursued b pharmacy and m pharmacy from amravati university and phd from north maharashtra university he has guided 56 m pharm students sir has 74 national and international publications with 291 citations and h index of 11 in his credit dr bharat sir is a recipient of various research grants like grant awarded by nmu and grant awarded by rusa about of total amount 2 lakh 70000 and more he is a member of various professional sciences like ipa apti etc with this short in information i would like to request our resourceful and proactive speaker dr bharat tekare sir to convey his talk please sir Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your kind words. I am audible. Hello. Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Ajay, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. So, I will share my screen. Yes, sir. Just a minute. So is it visible, sir? Uh, no, sir, not yet. Yes, I had shared it already. Yeah. Uh, have you opened your PowerPoint presentation? Yeah, I had shared it. Opened the PowerPoint presentation. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it, now it is here. Now it is here. Wait, sir. Okay. Yeah, okay. So actually, it's oh uh, yeah, uh, now it is visible, sir. Okay. Okay. Moves. Okay. Can you change yes. to the another side so we can check whether it is uh, smoothly working or not? Yes. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, it's working, sir. It's working. So we can start, sir, from the first slide, sir. It's working. Okay, okay. Thank you, Ajay, sir. Yeah. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today's my talk on recent advances in drug delivery system for extended drug release in cancer therapy. Basically, I am proposing here what uh, the uh, drug uh, drug delivery system for the cancer, which is 
so which should be a targeted and a prolonged release so that the dosing of a free, uh, dosing of a patient is get reduced and in particularly in cancer patient when we say that cancer is uh, more dangerous it is more fetal or oh, oh, that means it kills millions of people every year so when we have to treat this cancer the we have to treat the fear of patient also that means when the number of medicine number of dose the patient takes uh, per day that can also be reduced by using this technology so dosing frequency is to be reduced simultaneously what we have to target the tissue infected tissue so cancer is what basically it is uncontrolled proliferation of cells all in a simple word we can say that it is uncontrolled growth of a cell isn't it so when we say that these are uh, this uncontrolled growth that means what there is something different in the uh nucleic matter of a cell that means the growth is uncontrolled that is somewhat different from the normal body cells so because of complexity complexity in genetic and phenotypic level it shows clinical diversity and therapeutic resistance that means what basically the patient to patient this cancer type and treatment get changes a variety of approaches are being practiced for the treatment of cancer each of which has some significant limitation and side effects so most of the time when we treat the cancer that is to with the cytotoxic sub substances and basically there is a no drug who can identify the good cell and bad cell that means the good normal cell and the cancerous cell so it is our duty to make them or uh, to formulate them in a such a device or in such a formulation that this device or this formulation can identify the cancerous cell so that the cytotoxicity can occur only in the uh, cancerous cell not to the normal cell so unfortunately due to non specific targeting of anti cancer agents many effects many side effects occur and poor drug delivery of these agents cannot bring out the desired outcome in most of the cases basically the drug delivery or drug targeting is very difficult in cancer almost this is one of the reason why the patient is not get treated properly but at the same time the cancer diagnosis is one of the major problem so in the very first lecture of uh, dr anuradha diagnosis uh, stages of stages uh, detection of cancer so accordingly cancer is detected though it is early stage or so in later stage so it depends on a patient or its symptoms so the duty of a formulator or of a chemist is what to deliver the drug to the patient in a optimum form so in a regular routine form that is the conventional drug delivery system is not sufficient to deliver the drug to the targeted site even when we say that the uh, conventional drug delivery system when the drug is given by the conventional drug delivery system in that case what happens is the drug is get uh distributed throughout the body where it is not required isn't it that means what happens so unnecessary cytotoxicity is introduced throughout the body so for that purpose we need a targeting so when we have to target a particular organ in that case the conventional drug delivery system is not useful so for that purpose what we need a novel drug delivery system and out of that the nanotechnology so this nanotechnology is widely used by the elect uh, electronics generally what uh, the mobiles or tv or the, all these uh, satellites and all these they have used the nanotechnology very successfully every mobile every uh, electronic uh, thing that it's even the computer or laptop which we are using they are using nanotechnology widely and very successfully so now this is the era where all the researchers all maximum researchers are working on a nanotechnology and use of nanotechnology for incurable diseases like cancers so cancer may be of any part of a body it may be a pancreatic cancer it may be a blood cancer it may be a liver cancer anything any 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 type of cancer can be treated by this nanotechnology or nanoparticles so when we have to now we are in a phase where the development is going on already there is no, no nanoparticle or no uh, such things which is ha which has been already well established in a market so every time a personalized medicine is required depending on a need of patients we are going to 
uh, treat the patient whether with the liposomes nano uh, neosomes dendrimers or sometime the radiation therapy so all these are the different personalized type of medicines we can say so the nano medicine for again this nano medicine is where we can use for the prevention diagnosis and treatment of the disease so nano medicine basically the targeted drug delivery system when we say that it has a specific goals that means what it should be a more specific drug targeting and delivery so as to avoid the toxicity with maintaining the proper therapeutic effect so when we maintain this uh, therapeutic effect which with reduction in uh, toxicity at that say, at the same time what we are achieving we are achieving the greater safety for the patients and what when the greater safety for the patient that means what uh, what happens a reduction in toxicity is there and proper effect or desired pharmacological activity is observed that means what faster development of a new safe medicines can be developed through all these uh, targeted drug delivery system then advantages of tar targeted drug delivery system basically these advantages we know many a times we read for the uh, uh, right form of b farms so i think these are not what i am explaining these are not somewhat different these are the already established that when we say that it is a targeted drug delivery system that means what it is it gives the localization localization that means a localized drug delivery is possible through this targeted drug delivery system when when we say that it is a localized one that means what it doesn't get distributed throughout the body only that particular affected area the concentration of drug is increased that means what the toxic side effects on the other parts of the body that can be avoided and once it is a localized that means what we can say that it is a control by distribution that means it is distributed in a limited area of a body or in affected area of a body and when we say that it is only in a affected area of body that means we can uh, alter uh, or modulate the pharmacokinetic parameters like clearance and all these things for the uh, drug then what once the modulated by uh, pharmacokinetic is observed that means what the long the duration residence time of a medicine in a body will get increased that means the half life of a drug is get increase in the blood so that means what the more time is required uh, the patient will get more time in between two dosing so there are certain examples that when this microsphere or nanoparticles are injected or it is given to the patient in that case they reside in a body up to 40 days that means what after 40 days the patient have to take the medicine that means what the patient is in a comfort zone regarding the medic medication so in general what uh, apart from cancer when we think about the medication that is too simple but when we come to the cancer in that case the fear of a patient is more important the fear is equally responsible for the death to that of the cancer so when we say that the improved patient compliance and when we are going to target the specific cell or specific organ only in that case what the dose is get reduced automatically that means what the total volume of distribution is get uh, restricted to that particular area that means what we need a less dose so less dose is again uh, attributed to what the less renal clearance that means the the drug will remain in a um, circulation for longer period of time until it gets reacted with the site of action then what i am suggesting i am suggesting the smart nanoparticles so smart nanoparticles means what basically what uh, we are targeting the drugs that is epr in earlier uh, session madam has described this epr enhancement penetration retention effect so this is what this is a general passive targeting of a drug isn't it so a particularly uh, nano particles which are having a, we can say that a particular affinity or they are coated with some cations and ions and they are particularly attracted with the uh, affected cells so when they are attracted with particular cells they get adhered with that vascularization so in cancerous uh, cell the vascularization is more because the growth is uncontrolled and to grow this that uh, cancerous cell they need a more vascularization that means what more blood cells are continuously forming in that area and what we are targeting that particular area with this passive targeting so in passive targeting what that 
area is not directly uh, targeted so then what the stimuli responsive targeting now what stimuli when we say that it is a cancerous cell so cancerous cell and a normal cell they have some different physiology isn't it so drug though drugs are not able to identify but we are being uh, we can differentiate this cancerous and the normal cell so the temperature ph and their uh, electro ele electric and magnetic fields by with the help of all these internal or external stimuli we can identify we can attract or we can supply the drug to a particular that area for say example when we say that it is a stimuli responsive so stimuli responsive means what the cancerous cells are somewhat more acidic in nature the surrounding of cancerous cell is somewhat acidic in nature that means what when any drug or any polymer when we um, prepare the nanoparticles in such a way that that will be uh, responsible for uh, degradation or uh, release the drug only at that pH the drug will come and uh, the nanoparticle will reach at the site and at that place only it will get uh, released that means what this is one of the stimuli then for temperature again the external temperature with the help of ultrasound we can use this uh, ultrasound uh, therapy for the nanoparticles to do reach at a particular area then what the active targeting active targeting so this is quite uh, good and uh, almost many times we are uh, working on this receptor based transferon based uh, aptamer based uh, monoclonal antibody based and peptide targeting like lecithin base base so what this passive targeting already enhanced permeability retention effect or passive targeting is most basic targeting strategy employed in smart uh, nanoparticles the epr effect is complex phenomenon de de uh, uh, detected by the degree of leaky tumor vascularization and poor lymphatic draining that varies significantly between tumor types and anatomical sites and patients the high fluid pressure in the tumor can prevent now listen what happens when we say that there is a formation of tumor tumor is what it is uncontrolled growth that means what they are having extra internal uh, fluid we can say that up to uh, extra fluid they are having so when whenever the drug enters uh, try to enter through this cancer cell in that case the extra intracellular fluid that will reject or that will repel the drug to enter that means what in short the from higher to lower concentration and lower to that concentration gradient type of field was there that means from high pressure to low pressure so it is not possible for drug to enter inside this so instead of that what we are passive targeting so when we uh, target this uh, particular area by passive targeting what they nanoparticles are just uh, attached with this are get adhered with that particular vascularization and there the drug is released slowly into the systemic circulation of that particular area so that these leaky uh, vasculate that is uh, what we say that leaky vascular vasculature of tumors and that allows for the entrapment of and accumulation of nanoparticles that means what the enhanced permeability what we have enhanced the permeability of a drug that is into the cancerous cell and when it enters into the cell the retention will get increased isn't it and once the chemotherapy agent once it is get attracted or when it is get entrapped inside the uh, targeted cell in that case obviously what the chemotherapy agent has to do uh, that will do its own uh, 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 that will do the work and thereby kills the cancerous cell isn't it then active targeting what the nanoparticles containing chemotherapy agents are designed in such a way that they are directly interact with the defected cells so this defect defected cell or cancer cells that can be identified so how we can identify how one can say that the targeted drug delivery or these nanoparticles will, will which will reach to that particular area so there are certain uh, physiological changes or physiological properties of cancer cell like they are having uh, negatively charged or uh, particularly when we say that these are hydrophobic polymers which can uh, uh, reside for in a blood stream 
for longer period of time so the re recirculation recirculation continuously recirculation can takes place and due to that what the chemotherapy agent along with the some uh, polymers they come in contact with these cells and by phagocytosis these are uh, engulfed by the cancerous cell and easily rapidly clear uh, by the reticoendothelial system so this is what the active target in that that means what we have to uh, attach the drug to that particular cancerous cell so for uh, attaching this we generally use this receptor targeting so when we have to use this receptor target this uh, more specifically we can say that the folate receptor transferrin receptor uh, luteinizing hormone releasing <coughs> hormone receptor then acyloglycoprotein receptor anti body mediated targeting and antigenesis so these are certain examples through which the <coughs> drug is targeted to particular area albumin based targeting then hyaluronic acid hyaluronic acid based targeting hyaluronic acid to the glycoprotein cd54 so like this lot many examples are available in my, in literature so how one can go for the targeting now here up to what we come to know targeting so to what extent we have to target that now this targeting is different that we have to target now the drug reaches to the area of our interest now what when the drug is to get released so drug should get released on a stimuli responsive targeting so stimuli responsive like what the ph around the tumor cell is more acidic the extracellular environment of a uh, solid tumor is acidic and there is alter ph gradient across the cell compartments so what when there is a change in ph in normal when we say this is acid Uh, or ph dependent solubility so the same concept here we are using the uh, ph gradient across the cell compartment is different so when this ph responsive nanoparticle comes in a contact or uh, comes in a contact with this infected cell in that case the ph gradient and change the solubility pattern obviously when these are ph sensitive they comes in a acidic ph they will get a uh, solubilize at that particular area the core shell polymer nanoparticles are designed with their lower critical solution temperature so when we say that this is a design with their lower critical solution temperature that means what at a ambient ph 7.4 please sir that means what when we say that this solution temperature low solution temperature that means below that the material is get solubilized in all uh, proportion so this at low ph around tumor cells the resulting change in lcst that is low low critical solution temperature causes the core shell of nanoparticle to deform and precipitate in the acidic environment triggering the release of chemotherapeutic chemotherapeutic agents so when this this is one example of stimuli this is one example of stimuli so like that we can use the different physiological stimuli to uh, express or to release the drug so clinical uh, importance of smart nanoparticle drug delivery system basically these are called as a smart because what these are targeted and stimuli responsive and they are having the passive uh, targeting also that means what we are using almost all the mechanisms for targeting the drug to cure or to treat the cancerous cell so can when we are uh, saying that these are the smart nanoparticles they are having the targeted stimuli responsive obviously what the lower dose of drug is required maintain effective intracellular concentration widening the therapeutic window of anti cancer agents the nanopolymers possess high drug loading capacity which allows them to achieve the same efficacy with small doses reduce systemic side effects small nanoparticles smart nanoparticle formulations that can increase tumor accumulation and specificity of a cancer cell through coordinated targeting strategies so physiological importance of spot nanoparticle drug delivery system is what smart means what they are stimuli responsive drug release they are higher tumor accumulation extended means what what uh, we come that it should uh, be remain in a circulation for prolonged period of time and low drug burst 
that means busting is more major problem with this uh, uh, normal conventional or we can say that the uh, extended release or uh, sustained release tablets and all this but uh, such things is not happened with this uh, extended release because the drug is not get burst at the same time because it totally depends on what the stimuli which it is getting isn't it so when we say uh, saying that these are the smart extended release nanoparticles along with the, the normal nanoparticles what extra we getting we are getting the decreased renal clearance because it is extended for uh, extended uh, remains in extended form for a longer period of time in the body then reduced toxic uh, cytotoxicity because why the it is a site specific it is a stimuli responsive and the uh, nanoparticles are they uh, are designed in such a manner that they will not release the drug anywhere in the body then due to that what we what we get the higher therapeutic index and extended release nanoparticles so this part is what more of uh, known to everyone who was working on a nanoparticles because when the nanoparticle comes in the mind that means the first comes that it is a extended release nanoparticle it is a extended release nanoparticle so nanoparticle basically designed to treat the uh, to treat the patients for longer period of time with lower dose that means for any medicine that is to be taken for a longer period of time in that case it is better to treat with the nanoparticles because the dose is get reduced the cytotoxicity or the toxic effects on the other parts of the body are get reduced because we can target the specific organ so the extended release nanoparticles used in a clinical setting holds drug either on surface absorb absorb in the matrix that attains sustained release then hydrophobic di the biodegradable polymers nanoparticles are commonly used for the continuous supply of encapsulated therapeutic agents at the site of tumor nanoparticles can undergo certain cell surface modification to achieve prolonged circulation so now the question uh, or the problem with us is what we have to increase the retention of a drug in a nanoparticle so polyethylene glycylation is the method this is the simplest method by which we can use uh, by which which can we can increase the hydro hydro hydrodynamic radius prolong plasma retention time and decrease the proteolysis and even once we say that that is a decrease in the renal excretion that means the wastage or removal of a drug that is renal excretion is what it is a complete or permanent removal of a drug from the body so when the drug retains in a body in a unchanged form in that case it can be circulated throughout the body or throughout the body and whenever it comes in a contact with the uh, particular cell or particular area infected area it can come with the stimuli with the particular say we can say that the cationic anionic type of uh, binding with get attached with the that particular cell uh, infected cell so in such a way this uh, polyethylene glycylation is important then what the topo isomers can be used to treat the breast cancer designed by uh, designed to improve the pk means what were the pharmacokinetic properties and tolerability of irritocaine whose enhanced therapeutic response has been attributed to more prolonged circulation in P uh, polyethylene glycylated nanomaterial. That means what is this polyethylene uh, glycol? When we combine with this uh, nano, uh, this polymers, in that case, it will increase the circulation time, or it will circulate out. It will remain in a systemic circulation for a longer period of time. Uh, then clinical benefits of extended release, or we can say that these are the smart extended release nanoparticles. so smart means why uh, basically these are depending on uh, the stimuli responsive or uh, all these uh, three uh, passive targeting then uh, receptor targeting and stimuli responsive so in that what we get clinically benefited wide therapeutic window no multiple drug resistance then reduce side effects so improved efficacy reduce toxicity enhance patient compliance prolonged relief 
better life cycle of a drug and when we say that uh, we are treating the patient with a uh, uh, anti neoplastic drug or uh, say uh, any uh, anti cancer drug in that case if the life cycle of a drug that can be managed if that can be increased in a body in that case obviously what the drug dosing time interval will get increase that means say for uh, instead of uh, daily dosing we can give it two days three days or four days that means what the renal uh, clearance that has been decreased that means what the drug retains in a body for the longer period of time that's why the better life cycle of a drug is observed that's what we are getting the prolonged relief and prolonged relief means what the patient medication cycle is get extended that means the patient is get somewhat relied so that uh, that implies to what that implies to the improved efficacy of that particular dosage form and that again depends on what because the wide therapeutic window reduce side effects and reduce side effects due to what the localization of a material at a particular area so targeting the basic concept of targeting is that to avoid the to avoid the extracellular uh, to reduce the uh, toxicity to all all the body in general when we say that we are taking the medicine by oral route in that case almost all the body parts or all the body tissues are get exposed to these drugs probably but uh, and at the site of action only the drug is able to show the pharmacological activity otherwise it will be get recollected and it is get destroyed uh, by the body mechanism and it is get removed from the body but at the same time what it is uh, for normal drugs it is good all we can accept these things but uh, for cancerous drug these are cytotoxic agents if they move in a body like that in the in that case they can uh, try to kill the, all the good cells and in that case what the patient will become weaker and weaker so to avoid all this we need so smart particles uh, basically the epr effect the the example is what uh, epr effect which is incorporating the folic acid receptor targeting and ps sensitivity for example this folic acid the amino butyric acid sterine malic anhydride copolymer is synthesized uh, was synthesized by some uh, investigator and they had tested this so when they are they have tested this uh, copolymer in that case what they found that this uh, yeah, uh, folic acid daba sma copolymer will work very uh, is going is uh, was showed very good results uh, regarding this targeting and uh, ps sensitivity so what at the same with the same copolymer what we are getting we are getting the epr that means enhancement penetration and retention effect at the same time the uh, uh, folic acid receptor targeting and the ps sensitivity so by using such things we can do or we can continue our work with the uh, smart extended release uh, nanoparticles then doxorubicin loaded missiles have recently been developed with reactive oxygen species and dual ps sensitivity so in earlier lecture ma'am has uh, explained about the oxygen requirement of a cancer cell as they are more growing more growing in that case what they required the oxygen to get grow so when the growing Uh, cells extra growing cells their growth rate is high their oxygen requirement is high that means what the reactive oxygen and the ph already ph is what it is somewhat uh, acidic in uh, that area so this doxorubicin loaded missiles which are uh, developed with what reactive oxygen species with dl ph uh, dual ph sensitivity that means what this uh, missiles will directly attach with this cancerous cell and due to this reactive oxygen and ps sensitivity drug will get released at that particular area and thereby increases the epr effect and receptor targeting is possible then thermosensitive liposome doxorubicin the release is triggered at the tumor site by locally increasing the temperature through high intensity ultrasound radiation so this is <coughs> used for many of the uh, cancer patient so incorporating extended release design principle into a smart nanoparticle will lead to a targeted and prolonged action therapies with unique physiological and clinical advantages so in conclusion when we try to design the nanoparticles 
so someone uh, goes for obviously it's uh, the interest of person so someone goes with the targeted drug delivery system okay that is i don't say that this is good, not good but uh, targeting drug delivery system some will work on a nanoparticles uh, which will uh, respond on a stimuli some will go for the epr uh, management so if we will try to continue with the study by combining all these that means epr effect that is passive targeting then stimuli response and active targeting if we could uh, combine all these things together in that case that will be a more beneficial for the patients so this could be a new future of smart extended release nanoparticles smart nanoparticles can exhibit sustained drug delivery would offer advantage with both clinical and physiological standpoints so here i conclude my session hello ajay sir hello hello sir uh, yes ajay sir uh, is there any question hello advantage toxic side effects of drug with example moving towards smart nanoparticles sir explain about passive target of nanoparticles with examples like long circulating liposomes micellars etc and also about active target nanoparticles with its phagocytosis mechanism sir also enlighten about stimuli response targeting extended drug release nanoparticles novel approaches to smart extended drug release with example of doxorubicin dp so with this spectacular session i again say thank you to uh, thank you sir for this wonderful session okay thank you ma'am i would like to thanks to our principal sir dr uh, mohan kale sir for giving me such a beautiful chance or beautiful uh, stage to express my views about uh, the, the nanotechnology and nano particles or drug release system for cancer so thank you very much sir i also would like to uh, thanks uh, the management for the institute as well as during this covid so once again sir and management and thank you priyanka ma'am for your wonderful thank words you. thank you sir thank you now coming towards last session of this 3 days e conference i am profusely elated to take an opportunity to introduce next speaker who is a renowned person for his wisdom and his knowledge your endless care guidance and support prove that you are a great leader we are really blessed to have you dr mohan kare our beloved principal dr mohan kare currently serving as a principal and professor at kokanyan pet rahul darkar college of pharmacy and research institute kazar sir has pursued b pharmacy and m pharmacy from nagpur university diploma in sales and marketing from bharatiya vidya bhavan Rajendra Prasad Institute of Communication and Management Bombay and PhD from Sharad Pawan College of Pharmacy Nagpur Sir is a recipient of prestigious MPA award from Maharashtra Pharmacist Association Mumbai for his contribution to pharmacy profession under his guidance the institute has received many accolades like accreditation by NAC for 3 year diploma pharmacy course at various research grants sir has institutionalized number of innovative practices in teaching and research 
the college has seen a complete transformation on the research and students' professional and society and social activities. Sir has 32 years of teaching experience and recognized as a PhD supervisor for RTM Nagpur University, MGRP University Jaipur, Rajasthan and Amravati University, and so on. Under his guidance, six students registered for PhD and two are awarded. Sir is a recipient of several grants with a total amount of more than 32 lakh from various funding agencies like AICT, DBT, ICMR, and SERP. He has one patent, three books, one book chapter, and more than 90 research publications in national and international journals to his credit. He has presented and published papers in Congress, conference seminars, and also participated in organized conferences AICT and ICMR sponsored seminars and staff development programs. Sir has also invited as a chairperson guest faculty from Renewed Institute and as a PCI inspector for inspection of institution. Sir is a member of various professional sciences like IPA, IPGA, PSI, APTI, and ISD. Recently, Sir has nominated as a BOS member from University of Mumbai. With this petite introduction, I request our beloved principal, Dr. Mohan Kareser, to commence his presentation. Preach, sir. Thank you, Priyanka, for such a detailed introduction. Let me adjust my screen. Yes. Ajay, it is visible? Uh, no, uh, no, sir, not yet. One minute. Yeah. So I have opened this. Uh, yeah, uh, open the power, uh, open the PowerPoint presentation. Coming and, to StreamYard. Uh, yeah. Then uh, share hmm. screen. Share screen. Yeah. Then application window. Bye. Application Bye. window. And uh, PowerPoint slideshow. And PowerPoint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Here it is. Uh, full, full screen. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. So it's okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, dear delegates, uh, welcome you to this uh, last session of AICT e conference. Actually. I am not a consultant, neither a physician, nor any talented person with reference to cancer or cancer pain. But as this conference was uh, organized at our college level, and I have gone through the experience of some of the parents and some patients with reference to cancer pain, so I thought I should elaborate something about this cancer pain and the role of pharmacist. In India, actually, the role of pharmacist is very less, whereas in developed countries, pharmacist plays an important role in cancer treatment and other follow-ups. Now, actually, our conference was inaugurated by Dr. Anuradha Madam. So I am thankful to her as well as to all the learned resource persons. And today, this is my last talk. This is one of my building, uh, my building of my college where I am principal. So coming back to our topic, cancer pain and the role of pharmacist. I always consider wherever medicine is there, pharmacist has to be there. Dear delegates, dear faculty members, you always think when you are in pharmacy that wherever, whenever 
anything related to medicine, anything related to disease, anything related to the treatment, therapy, anything. You have to play your important role and try to search your role. So I have chosen this topic, cancer pain and the role of pharmacists. Pain, it is an unpleasant sensory emotional experience associated with actual or potential tissue damage or described in terms of such a damage. There are many types of pains and pain is inevitable in cancer. It is mandatory. It has to be there. Each and every patient experiences pain either during the cancer or after the cancer or even before the cancer. And this is the pain which also helps in the diagnosis. So that is the important role of the pain. So pain is inevitable, but a suffering is optional. Suffering can be lowered and we can make the quality life of the patient by reducing his pain. And that role should be well played by the pharmacist as well as the caregiver as well as his family members. Pain is just like a love. When two persons love each other, they cannot measure love, but they experience love. They feel love themselves. So likewise, pain is whatever the experiencing person says. If it says, if he says that it is there, it means that it is there. So pain is just like a love. All cancer patients suffer from pain. The pain may be moderate to severe experienced by 40 to 50 percent of the cancer patient, very severe pain experienced by 25 to 30 percent of, uh, percent of the cancer patient or 80 percent of the terminal stage cancer experienced moderate to severe pain, even unbearable pain is there. There are n number of causes for pain, cancer pain. Most cancer pain is caused by the tumor the metastasis where it is occurring and as the tumor spreads and become enlarged slowly and slowly, it press the bones, it press the nerves, it press and affects the surrounding organs. And likewise in the body, the pain starts. It, this tumor itself can release the chemicals and these chemicals can irritate the surrounding area of the tumor. And this production of chemicals, they also initiate pain. Sometimes pain is due to the cancer treatment also. During chemotherapy, these chemotherapeutic drugs can cause numbness, tingling of hands and feet, as well as chemo might cause a burning sensation at the spot where injections are given. Remember that pain might have nothing to do with cancer. You could also have the general aches and pains such as headaches or muscle pain as a normal person has. That also can be there. Radiotherapy can cause skin redness and irritation and cause pain. Cancer related tests, cancer related treatments, any type of minor or major surgery which are associated with cancer, all these leads to discomfort and ultimately pain arises. Cancer pain has many sources. It sounds to be simple, but often caused by cancer itself. Pain, as we all know, you study in pharmacology, that is pain may be acute pain and chronic pain. Acute pain is due to the damage caused by an injury and tends to only last for short time, a short period. For example, having an operation can cause acute pain. The pain goes when the wound heals. In meantime, even the painkiller will usually keep this pain under control. Imagine that you have been punched into in your stomach. It hurts for some time, but after that it quickly disappears, eases off. So this type of pain is an acute pain which lasts for shorter period of duration and primarily some 
uh, very mild medicines or analgesics can take care of this pain. But chronic pain hangs around for a longer period of time, maybe for days, maybe for hours, maybe for a too much period, long time. So it is, it hangs for a long time. It can be a low throb or a sharp pain. It can affect your life in many ways because if pain continues, you can understand how is the quality of life at that time. There is no quality of life. The life becomes hopeless. Even patient can enter trauma. The agony of pain is tremendous. So although it won't completely disappear, but this chronic type of pain also can be managed with the pain medications. Chronic pain occurs due to changes to the nerves. As the tumor starts pressing the nerves, the nerve changes and this there also there is release of chemicals by the tumor and even the nerve changes due to the cancer treatment and this change in the nerves can also cause pain as you as many of the people experience sciatic pain or <coughs> in spondylitis the pain is there because it is because of the pressing of particular type of a nerve in that uh, our vertebral column in any type of bone and we feel so in the same type this tumor the growth or, or uh, growth which has taken place presses the nerves and may initiate nerve changes sometimes pain come can come quickly for example when you have a dressing change after operations then that time of pain is also called as incident pain and chronic pain is also called as persistent pain as it remains or hangs for a long period of time then one is a breakthrough pain. This is also a chronic pain. But when pain, chronic pain continues, for the treatment of cancer, as well as for treatment of this pain, we take medications. But in this, between the medication dose, there can be a flash of pain every once in a while. So this is called as breakthrough pain. It breaks in between or it breaks in between the effects of medication because we know the onset of action, duration of action. So, and again, the drugs are repeated. So in between, there can be a flash of pain and that is called as breakthrough pain. And this type of pain can also be managed by medicine, but again, uh, additional medication, pain medication will be required. Then there are different types of pain and the treatment may vary, nerve pain, bone pain, soft tissue, where the injury has occurred, soft tissue pain, phantom pain, referred pain, likewise. The... Now, we must think as a pharmacist, as a caregiver, these are some basic type of things. How much pain one might have with cancer? It depends on the type of cancer, which type of cancer it is, and accordingly, the pain may be there. If it is deep, visceral, the pain is of different types. So likewise, where it is, where that cancer is there, the stage of cancer, as you have studied different stages of cancer, so according to the stages of cancer also pain varies. It starts in the beginning with slow, but it can increase as the stage of cancer increases. So whether the cancer treatment has damaged any nerves or not, other factors also affect fear, anxiety, depression, lack of sleep. So these are all different factors. Care should be taken by the pharmacist, by the caregiver, by the near and dear ones of the patient to reduce this secondary factor so that pain can be reduced. It is very important to let medical team know if the person has pain. Never try to hold on with the pain. Never try to put up with it. Because pain is because of pressing of the nerves due to the changes in the nerves. And if it prolongs for a long time, then it can affect and may affect permanently and it will become very difficult to control such pain. So always whenever you feel any sign of pain, consider this is as a positive sign. This is something very important for tool of diagnosis. 
So always whenever there is a pain, particularly pain in any particular region, regularly occurring, always report to your physician or your cancer team. Assessment of the pain in the same way can be done by knowing the site where the cancer has taken place, where the tumor is there, where angiogenesis has occurred. Onset of pain, what is the onset? Characters, characteristic of the pain, the radiation, how it radiates, from where it starts, where it ends, uh, associated symptoms of this pain. What are other associated symptoms due to this pain? What is the timing? What is its frequency? Whether it is regular, whether it is the same time, or likewise, the timing should be noted. Exaggerating or relevating factors should also be noted. Severity of the pain should also be noted. And based on this characteristic, assessment of the pain can be done. So always with reference to pain, you should be keep you should keep doctor as well as pharmacist well informed. What hurts pain? Ask for the help. So whenever pain is there, ask for the help. If one has a religious or cultural reasons to be concerned about, we Indians believe in religion, we have fast, today we are having fast. So we skip the medicines so that if any such things is there, we should report it to our medical team. Looking weak, now looking weak again, it's actual sign of strength to say how you, one feels and always needs to feel good. Where do one feel the pain? What is the, where, which is the site? What does it feel like? Whether it is sharp, whether it is dull, whether it is low, whether it is high, whether it is burning, whether it is throbbing, whether it is shooting, whether it is steady. So any type of pain, one exercise, one feels, he should be able to tell. Accordingly, the treatment can vary. On the scale of 1 to 10, with 1 being the lowest and 10 being the highest, how strong pain is then? One should try to scale it. How long does it last? Whether for a few minutes, hours, or day or days. What makes it feel better? This is most important with reference to, again, caregivers, near and dear ones, and the pharmacist. Patient during the pain may feel better in between. So what is that cause, it, cause by which he is feeling better? Then one lie down when one is on one side or the other side, or when one is taking with some heat massage or cold massage. Likewise, if there is any change or one feels better, it should also be reported. So does it change with the treatment? That also should be reported. This is the wrong like face this pain rating scale. Normally, the physicians rate pain scale accordingly. You can see the face of this wrong baker how it is changing from 0 to 10. 0, no pain. 10, severe pain, unbearable pain. So likewise, the face reading changes. And accordingly, the patient feels also. And accordingly, the scaling of the pain can be done. The rating can be done. And it can be given some particular score, whether it is 1, 2, 3. So we can say so it is mild from 3, 4, 5, 6, it is going towards the moderate to severe. And from 6, 7, 8, it is severe. 8 to 10, unbearable, highly severe. So likewise, the rating should be done. So when we talk about medicines, analgesics have to be taken. Whatever is the course of treatment for the cancer, but analgesic has to be taken. So medicine, as you all know, Pharmacist gives the medicine, but whenever prescription is there, I would always advise our pharmacist not to prescribe medicines of their own, not to substitute the prescription. Rather, if you don't have that type of medicine or if you have some alternative or something is there, then talk to the physician and you can make the alternative or substitution if feels necessary. But don't try because already the patients are in stress. And if you are substituting and when he, the patient goes at home and if another near or dear one says, oh, this is not the medicine, something. So that itself causes again pain. So likewise, dear pharmacies, dear 
uh, budding pharmacies see that never do all this type of activity. You can do it, but with the information to the patient and his physician. Over the counter medicines are there common paracetamol like so acetaminophen, fen, aspirin, ibuprofen, naproxen. All these are mild pain relievers. Weak opioids are also there like codeine, which is codeine is even in the uh, cup syrup also. So strong opioid is also there, most powerful, fentanyl, methadone, morphine, and may, may n number of morphine substitutes, hydromorphone, oxygen, and n number of uh, drugs, mainly in cancer, opioid drugs are used, but based on the severity of the pain. So as usual, we will not go into all these details, but you all know drug therapy, the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, you know what are non-narcotic analgesics, what are narcotic analgesics. So in the mild pain, in the beginner's pain, non-narcotic analgesics can be started. But as the pain goes towards the severity and the scale rating shows 10, the nar strong narcotic drugs can also be administered. So along with this analgesics, some adjuvant medicines are also given drugs used with pain medication so antidepressants with depending upon the type of patient antidepressants anticonvulsant drugs local anesthetic corticosteroids bisphosphonate stimulants and n number of drugs are there which can be given along with the regular pain medicines but it is all prescribed by the doctors and we pharmacists should not prescribe it of our own there are even in severe uh, conditions where the pain uh, is severe and the patient cannot take medication orally then or he does not do normal compliance or the there are any side effect of the profile then always use this uh, uh, patches so fentanyl patches or so these are all opioid patches normally used in severe type of cancer pain this is one just common type of ladder which has been shown that as you relieve the pain, quality of life can improve. So step one includes use of non-opioid and some adjuvant drugs if needed. If the pain persists or if it goes on increasing, opioid for mild to moderate pain and some non-opioid plus some adjuvants can be given. Again, if the pain persisting or increasing, step by step, then opioid for moderate to severe pain, even non-opioid and adjuvants can be done. And pain persisting or increasing further, then invasive treatments, opioid delivery, injectables, they are given. But one has to see that if a cancer patient feels pain, his quality of life will improve only if there is a solution for pain and we are able to relieve the pain. At home, each patient needs a personal plan to control cancer pain. And patient can learn this from his experience. Whenever he takes any pain medicines, with his experience, he can learn when to take medicine, which medicines can be taken, how much to take, and likewise. So each patient needs a personal plan to control the cancer pain. And that plan needs to be able to work for him and his family, his near and dear one should also try to understand each and every point with reference to cancer medication and pain medication. Pain can be controlled in most people with cancer. Even the severe pain can be controlled well by combination of medicines that can be taken by mouth. Pain medicines work best if they are taken on a regular schedule before the pain becomes severe because normally some patient avoids the drugs. but if the pain is severe, one should not avoid, it should be taken. If the cause of pain can be treated with other methods, the need for medicine will slowly decrease and disappear as the cause is treated. There may be many causes due to which the pain has arose. And if these causes are removed, then the pain also will disappear. What a pharmacist can do? Watch the patient for the signs of pain. Ask the patient about the pain if he is noticing grimacing, moaning, tension or reluctance to move around in the bed. Try massaging 
either with warm baths or with warm wash clothes but avoid areas where radiation was given if this does not help even try the cold that is ice or cool packs both can work in some patient warm treatment in some patient cold treatment can also work so but this massaging or keeping this should be proper and it should not affect the injury part or the injured wound or if that is there or stitches is there so you one has to take care, care accordingly or if radiations part is there it should not medicines and dosage can be adjusted as needed control pain to improve the quality of life watch for confusion dizziness especially after starting a new medicine or changing the dose even change in the medicine even the change in the dose even change in some alternative medicines can also cause something so note each and every effect with the patient help the patient to walk until he knows that he can do it alone safely there are some patients who cannot walk of their own so one has to give proper help assist him and then see otherwise another uh, problems will arise suggest enjoyable activities to distract pain this is again a very important part which a pharmacist which a near and dear one which a caregiver or which a health care team should look after that is suggest him some enjoyable activities to change his mood change his mind and distract the pain so that the pain feeling will be reduced plan the activities to make him more comfortable and awake always take plenty of fluids and food with the that is fiber food that is much needed water is also needed because on when one is on medication one needs more amount of fluids if patient seems forgetful then help them to remember and see that they take proper medicines otherwise there can be miss in the drug or there can be overdosing or even underdosing can be there help the patient remember to take take the stool softeners or laxatives suggested to prevent constipation many patients experience constipation as he is bedridden so stool softeners or laxatives are uh, given so re making remember it should be taken at a proper time if it is to be taken at evening or night time after the meals and everything is over then that should be kept in mind if the patient is having any trouble taking pills ask the cancer care team about medicines that come in liquid or acceptable dosage forms so that should be done by a pharmacist talk with the cancer team so that you understand which medicines are for pain and how it is to be used be sure that the patient has the list of the prescription the list of the medication and they are taking including the pain medicines if you help the patient use to pain patches then be sure that you know how to use and then dispose the pain patches safely keep pain medicines away from others especially children and pets when you are caring for someone with pain plan time for activities you enjoy and take care of yourself also if you are happy you can make the people happy a support group for the family members may be helpful and they should see that they are also cheerful they are also helpful and they support the patient as and when it is needed pharmacist as i told you in between also that there should be no prescribing by the pharmacist there should be proper stock and sale of good quality of medicines there should be no replacement and substitution unless and until desired or unless and until discuss with the physician normally our people they do not discuss with the physician they think what the physician will tell and all that no make your physician a friendly there are n number of pharmacists who are doing who are practicing so you should 
the physician should know that you have an as a pharmacist you have a knowledge and you can do proper substitution so he will himself give the right for replacement and substitution if needed issue the purchase and sell on cash memos discourage otc sell schedule medicines should be sold always on the prescription only don't sell your license give patient information this is the greatly needed from a pharmacist to a patient to any chronic patient even to any person who is in stress always wear a apron do proper counseling do not be a party for irrational medication or ir irrational practices how your pharmacist can help regardless of the type of medicines that a doctor prescribes this is again a important role which is to be played by pharmacist many of you can say that sir we don't have any role to play with this but no as i said earlier wherever a medication is there pharmacist is there in existence provided you gain the knowledge you learn the subject you learn about the medication you learn about its adverse effect you learn about its dosage you learn about its uh, mechanism of action you learn about its interaction with food and everything so likewise if you pick, you acquire knowledge you can pass this knowledge to others so likewise explaining how the medication work counseling the information more than once is needed in stressful times many times person when he comes to your counter or when he takes medicine if he is in a chronic stage or if he is a cancer patient or even of a chronic disease patient he is always stressful and if you repeatedly tell him properly it will be nice if one is taking multiple medicines your pharmacist can help you to understand so the pharmacist should be able to understand and tell him about the adr drug interactions some medication should be always taken with meals so that should be explained which type of because the prescription can contain n n number of uh, medications and normally the physician may not tell every time so tell him counsel him properly that these medication should be taken with meal normally when it is written with meals see that you should take your medication within 20 minutes to 30 minutes after the meal meals does not mean many of uh, uh, persons i have seen that they keep their medication on the table dining table it's as they eat food they take it that is not the case after meal they will give a gap of at least near by 20 minutes to 30 minutes <coughs> <coughs> other medication should be taken on an empty stomach so so that is also required so take this medication empty stomach say 10 or 20 minutes before you are going on the food except <coughs> diabetic medication diabetic medication should be taken and the food check should be taken immediately if the medication is self administered by an injection the pharmacist should explain the proper injection techniques <coughs> relieving what are the side effects reviewing the side effects that might occur this information normally is provided in the package insert in form of leaflet along with the medication but you must have seen that insert yourself minute readings are there no one can is no one is able to read unless a lens is applied and it becomes a vulnerable for the patient also so better it will be valuable to hear it from you you the pharmacist so always explain the side effects that may occur with reference to medication explain even this is important part in cancer treatment and chronic treatment because expenditure is huge so during insurance cover if a generic or if any substitution is done then that may not be reimbursed and that can lead to many complication so try to explain this properly and see that it should be substituted from doctors itself or physicians itself and a proper medication is given recommending financial resources some persons are cannot afford or they are from a, a poor background so there are number of ngos there are number of financial organizations where the assistant to the patient is provided so that list of such organization list of such uh, donors 
list of such persons who can provide food, the list of persons who can provide accommodation to nearby people, that all should be kept by a pharmacist and such type of information should always be passed to the cancer patient. Rehabilitation of the chronic patients, age-old patients, this is also a concept which the developed countries has taken up. We have not taken, this is a new part again for pharmacy. Cancer patient needs to undergo rehabilitation as living with cancer, cancer treatment and recovering from this chronic disease is a heavy experience, is really a thing where a person can undergo trauma, there is agony. So he needs help, he needs rehabilitation. The need for rehabilitation varies greatly with different types of cancer and in the different type of patient groups that should be also understood. Pharmacist to rehabilitate the patient to ensure that during cancer and afterwards they have full enjoyable life physically, psychologically, socially. Try to understand this properly. Pharmacist to rehabilitate the patient to ensure that during cancer afterwards the patient has full enjoyable life physically, psychology and socially. So this is also important part of rehabilitation whereby this is in developed countries, this is in advanced stage and many pharmacists have started this as their career. Neuropsychological rehabilitation is needed when there is any effect to the brain or when there is a brain function disorder due to brain tumor and other causes. So such type neuropsychological motivation, guidance should be provided and neuropsychological rehabilitation of the patient has to be taken. Rehabilitation should also support for speaking, for attention, for memory in if that is a loss. Speech therapy is for dealing this with speech and voice disorder resulting from the cancer. So here also pharmacist should learn this and help the cancer patient. Physiotherapy the physiotherapists are there, include exercise therapy, massaging and various type of physical therapies which is needed in cancer patient also. Occupational therapy also plays an important role. So likewise, psychological support, spiritual support is needed to the patient and during rehabilitation, this should be provided by a pharmacist. So my Thinking is that uh, we, the pharmacist, should try to understand the difficulties of the patient and see that how medication can be proper, how medication can be useful, how medication can be given properly, how the adverse interactions, adverse drug reactions can be avoided, how the drug interactions can be avoided, how the proper supply of the medication be there what should be the top proper storage of the drug. So likewise, we should take care of all such cancer patients. See this, a good physician treats the disease. And disease is treated by medicine and it is the pharmacist which prepares, who prepares, who manufacture, who distribute, who educate the physician also in treating disease. So a great physician treats the patient who has the disease. That is more important in today's day that one has to treat the patient who has that disease. So pharmacist should counsel, should aware and educate the patient. That is the main message which I want to give you, dear delegates. So the greatest medicine for all is to teach people how not to need it. I am repeating this. The greatest medicine for all is to teach people how not to need it. Because there are n number of medicines irrationally being prescribed, irrationally being given and there is no necessity and it should be learned by the pharmacist. Last, from last two, three years, we are seeing the entire views of the antibiotics and the now pharmacists are carrying that movement that don't use antibiotics 
even for a proper cold or influenza or for some uh, type of treatment antibiotics are given so likewise we can reduce the use of medicines so that is the another message thank you all of you for patient uh, hearing thank you sir thank you for such a motivational and inspirational session sir deeply explain about the pain its causes its types such as acute pain to chronic pain with suitable examples and also insights about depending on the type of cancer how pain will be changed and in the case, in that case what will be the role of pharmacist sir also guide about how one should treat with cancer patient and about prescribed medicine over cancer like analgesic opioids etc on coming to various drug therapies are given information about nsaid non narcotic analgesic narcotic analgesic and so on at the end the counsel nicely to the pharmacist and about their crucial role in the treatment of cancer and also about the rehabilitation of cancer thank you sir with such a wonderful session and motivating all of us thank you priyanka yes sir with this i conclude this 3 days e conference today with a deep satisfaction we conclude that there is no alternative to hard work and dedication at this institute we not only give our students the best but also make sustained efforts to inculcate in them and tough mindset that is determined and passionate for success and that to hold at the same time maintaining focus on social responsiveness as all the good things come to the end in ordinary life we hardly realize that we receive a great deal more than we give and that is only with the gratitude that life becomes rich i feel honored to great opportunity to propose a vote of thanks of today's program on behalf of kokanyan petrahu darkar college of pharmacy and my own behalf i convey my regards and hearty thanks to all teaching staff technical staff organizer who put their persist persistent effort to make this program successful i would like to thank our principal dr mohan kare sir whose guiding vision always motivates us to strive for best i would like to convey my special thanks to management without whose support the event wouldn't have been possible and yes thank you all the participants for eagerly attending all the sessions with this here by i conclude this 3 days e conference there is one announcement for participants that those having 80% attendance will get certificate on their mail within the week stay safe one, healthy one more, stay one one more announcement please, please, please. at this end of this session i give my sincere thanks to all delegates and well wishers who have been continuously in our touch and listening even after this all these uh, presentations are available on youtube and there co continuous uh, feedback comes to us we also feel motivated if we are able to pass some good messages to you i also thank aict in particular because of them we could organize this uh, e conference and motivate our budding pharmacists faculty members and all again we will it is a continuous series from our side that at least two three webinar series are being held in each month and we are able to support you but for that you should always be a good listeners and give a good feedback thank you all of you for your patient listening for all these three days thanks to all resource persons because of whom this seminar was a wonderful seminar thank you thank you all of you thank you sir stay safe healthy and stay learning thank you